Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Global MBA Luxury Brand Management Track webinar. Um, today, we're going to present this um, track, this Global MBA track to you. Um, we are four today here to answer all your questions and present the program. Uh, first, we have Delphine Dion, who is a professor of marketing at ESSEC and also the academic coordinator for the luxury brand management track. Hi, Delphine. Hi, Laura. Nice to meet you, all of you. Um, then you have me, I'm the International Recruitment Manager for ISEC Business School. Hello, everyone. Um, then we have Lara Atawi, who is an alumnus from the Global MBA Luxury Brand Management Track, Class 2014, who is now a Zone Marketing Director for L'Oréal Lux. Hi, Lara. Hello, hello, everyone. Super happy to be here with you today. Uh, and then we have Sophia, who is also an alumna from the uh, Luxury Brand Management Track, class of 2012, who is now a collection merchandising coordinator for Saint Laurent. Hi, Sophia. Hi, nice to meet you and happy to answer any questions today. Fantastic. Um, now I'm going to talk about you about what's going to happen during this one hour with us. Um, I'm going to talk very quickly about the ESSEC Business School in general. Um, I will tell you a little bit more about the global MBA in general, the class profile that we are um, looking at when we um, look at participants and future participants. Uh, then Delphine will dive into the luxury brand management track, so go into specifics about courses. I will tell you a bit more about the talent center, very important in the program. I will tell you about the application process and our next deadlines. And then our grade two alumnas will tell you a bit more about their experiences in the program and you can also add, ask all your questions during that time. So you can start asking questions in the chat um, as of right now but we'll answer those questions at the end of the presentation. Um, first, a little bit more about ESSEC Business School. Uh, we have four campuses. We're in Sergi, we're in La Défense, we're in Singapore, and in Rabat in Morocco. So a very international school with international campuses. Uh, and we also have one digital campus. We are um, consistently ranked as one of the best top business school in France, in Europe, and in the world. Uh, we are number two in France, we're number six in Europe, and we're number five for executive programs um, in the world. So very important to keep those rankings in mind. Um, regarding uh, accreditations, international accreditations, we have the Triple Crown, um, ACSB, AMBA, and EQUIS. So to make sure that your program is recognized and um, has the triple crown. You, here's a quote um, that kind of represents the program very well. Uh, we at, the, at ISEC in the Global MBA, our professors or staff uh, will take truly passionate individuals to the next level of their career. We are a, what we call a boutique program. So we're quite a, a small program, a small cohort. We wanna make sure that we address all our participants as individuals with specific projects, specific aspirations. And we also want you to know all your classmates and make sure that you can build this network quite early on in uh, your career. So we um, have passionate participants from very different backgrounds and industries. So it allows for good diversity in the classroom and then a great diversity um, of, of careers after the program. So we, um, all our alumni have a global success. We wanna make sure everyone can have global, a diverse success in different fields and different areas. About the program specifically, so to go into numbers, I would say um, the program lasts 12 months. So it's a one year program. It is full time with one intake in September. Um, you can, you will study most of your time in Paris with a possibility to also go uh, into Singapore um, for a few months. Um, we have 30 plus uh, company experiences, meaning networking experience races, speakers, uh, field trips, anything like that. Um, and something that is quite important is a three months capstone consulting field project where you will be able to be in a company, a company um, that is of interest to you in a field that is of interest to you, um, and you will work directly into that company for three months. 
Here you will see also that when I talked about company experiences, I talked about field trips. In the luxury brand management track, you will have four field trips. You'll have two um, face to face and then two virtual field trips. Um, Delphine, would you like to tell us a bit more about the field trips in, the, in this track? Okay, so um, uh, we will have two field trips, uh, one in Italy uh, going to Milan and Florence and one in London. So the goal of these field trips is to meet managers and mostly uh, we have talked with CEOs from like large, uh, for, large, large firms like uh, Versace, uh, uh, Gucci uh, and in England, Mulberry, Joe Malone and so on. And we also have, we also organize virtual trips because we have uh, one virtual trip in China and one virtual trip in, in the US. So it's, uh, these virtual trips are one week trip, uh, virtual trip abroad where the same thing, we, we meet managers, we meet CEOs and so on, experts of the market. Great, so, thank you. Um, and so let me tell you a bit more about the class profile. So um, on average, the age is 30 years old. 97% um, of our class is international or has an international experience. So um, if you're French but have worked internationally, that works, um, that works for us. Uh, and if you're already abroad, having another international experience is, uh, is important to us. On average, the uh, years of work experience is six years, so it can be a little less, it can be more. Uh, our two alumni can tell us a bit more about their number of years of experiences they had before uh, joining the program, maybe. Was it how, how many years did you have beforehand? Um, for me, it was five years. Okay, great. For me, I was coming with only two years. I wanted to do the MBA actually right after university and they said I needed minimum of two years so I went to get that and I applied it as soon as I could. Absolutely. So yeah, like I said, diversity of profiles. And if we see that you have a lot of potential, uh, you can have uh, less years of experience. Absolutely. Um, and then we have 50% of the participants are female here. We have 100% of representation of women. Um, but in the classroom, it will be about 50-50. Uh, is there anything to add about the profile? Maybe Delphine? Um, Maybe on the, the international yeah, maybe just to highlight these uh, international profiles, we have students coming from all over the world. Uh, this year we have uh, a couple of students from the US, uh, from India, China, Korea, um, Germany. What do we have? Usually we also have students from Canada and of course we have students from uh, different uh, European countries and um, and also um, sometimes we have students from uh, Philippines, um, Malaysia, yeah, Southeast uh, Asia. Well, it's it's really an international experience for all of us. Honestly, I couldn't agree with Delphine more. Uh, in my class, we were uh, in luxury, uh, I think 40 or 42 students uh, with, uh, I think, 18 different nationalities uh, from my year. So honestly, super, uh, super rich uh, experience. Yes, and you get the opportunity to, uh, to work in teams uh, and uh, and all teams are on each project. Teams are different, so it's really a, a great international uh, experience. And this is very also very important also for your future career because you get the opportunity to understand what is specific about all these different cultures and how you can adapt in in working in multicultural cultural teams. Absolutely. Um, Delphine, I'll, I'll leave the floor to you. Uh, we're now going to the, the specific classes, so go right ahead. Okay, uh, thank you, Laura. So first, what is important to know is that this is an MBA and our goal is to train executive managers. So of course, you need to know all the fundamentals that an executive managers need to get. So that means First, your ability, there is a course on managing and leading organizations because we want to train future leaders. Then you have 
uh, three courses on macroeconomic and strategy because same thing you're here to uh, get the opportunity to understand how to uh, manage a company lead a company and in this uh, uh, very complex environment then as an executive manager you need to get uh, an uh, fundamentals on all the most important uh, element that uh, you need to manage a company like finance, accounting, ma marketing, uh, statistics. Um, so these are really the fundamentals. Then we have a course on digital distribution because in our in the MBA we have two specific two uh, two really important topic that we really focus a lot on digital disruption and sustainability and then always in the core track uh, three uh, courses related to uh, sustainability so one course on sustainable finance and one course on macroeconomics uh, really focused on sustain sustainability and one course on ethics uh, so these are the four fundamental uh, courses that you need in an MBA in addition we also uh, train you to get skills and competencies in very specific um, areas so you will get a certificate uh, you will get a course on advanced excel for managers power bi tableau you will also get the opportunity to get google certificates and also uh, we also have a course on french because this is important as you know many luxury firms are french and even if uh, you it's not mandatory to, to speak french it's better to have like a few a first um uh, immersion into that that French culture and French language. Okay, so this is for the the core track. Then we have two tracks in the global MBA. So we have this track, the luxury brand management track, and we have a second track focused on uh, on digital uh, disruption and and leadership. So concerning uh, the luxury brand management track. Um, First, you have to know that this MBA was the first MBA on luxury. It was founded in 1995 in partnership with LVMH and L'Oréal Lux. So uh, that means that joining that MBA, you will be uh, joining an, a quite large network of alumni uh, worldwide and what is interesting is that it's not only the network of uh, the global MBM alumni, but also the ESSEC uh, uh, alumni network, because uh, ESSEC is really famous worldwide for luxury. And if you look at uh, managers uh, uh, working in luxury, a lot of managers are coming from ESSEC. If you take now all, many, many top managers uh, in, in at LVMH or Caring or L'Oréal are coming from ESSEC. Uh, uh, the CEO of L'Oréal is an ESSEC alumni. The CEO of uh, Fred is an ESSEC alumni. The CEO of Boucheron is an ESSEC alumni. The general manager of Hermès is an ESSEC alumni. And the list is very very long so that is i think what is maybe the most important element of that mba we have our reputation we have this unique network that you can connect with um third element the goal of this luxury brand management so um the goal is to understand the major challenges that the uh, luxury businesses are fa facing today. And we want to focus on two very important uh, issues, sustainability and digital transformation. So all courses will relate to these two topics and then we will have courses really focused on, on these two dimensions. Uh, so, uh, fourth characteristic of the uh, uh, of the uh, luxury uh, brand management track, uh, you will gain insights in all sectors of luxury, 
fashion and accessories, wine and spirits, jewelry and watches, perfume and cosmetics. And this is very important because uh, luxury uh, groups are op and luxury brands are operating in all these different sectors. So um, even if you're interested in, in uh, or working in, in luxury, in uh, perfume and cosmetics, you, you may collaborate with people working in fashion and so on. So it's important to understand how these uh, different industries work. Um, and because we are a boutique, uh, we have we are a boutique MBA. You will get personalized career development advice. So we really try to understand who you are, what you're interested in, and and we really try to help you in in developing your career path. And as I told you uh, before, you get you will get the opportunity to network with uh, senior luxury professionals. So now let's maybe turn to uh, the courses. So these, uh, this is a list of specific uh, courses on luxury. Uh, first, we have uh, four courses on luxury. So these, the goal of these uh, courses is to understand what is specific about luxury and what is also specific about French luxury because this is a Paris-based uh, MBA, and, and as a French MBA, we are very connected with the French landscape of luxury. So, so we want to immerse you in that, in, in that um, essence of the French luxury. Of course, we'll talk about all different issues because uh, luxury is not just about France, it's also about uh, globalization and so on. But we want to make you uh, dive into these French brands. Uh, then we have um, um, several um, uh, courses more on the management of luxury, focusing a lot on uh, all the digital aspect of, uh, of luxury. So we have one course on digital communication, one course on e-retail, one course on distribution, including omnichannel issues, and one uh, course on branding, including also um, all the uh, online uh, elements. Uh, a course on sustainability, because this is very important for us, and we really believe that this is a future of luxury, and several courses focused on uh, all the different um, uh, sectors, fashion, wine and spirits, perfume and cosmetics, and watches and jewelry. So can we move to the next slide, please? Uh, what is important about this, um, this um, program is that it's not just about courses, it's also about ability to, to, uh, do, to work uh, in teams for real projects for companies. So uh, we have uh, implemented several years ago a digital week competition. So here you work, it's, a, it's like a hackathon for one week. So the company gives you a brief and you, you have one complete week to work on the, uh, on, the, on the project and then you present your work to the company. There is a boutique internship. It's just a one week internship. And, and the goal is not to, of course, not to work in, in the store after, but just to understand what is specific about, uh, about uh, luxury, why uh, managing a boutique is so complex, why these clients, clients are, are so unique, and so, and so on. Um, Third element, something that Laura already mentioned, is cap field, field project, capstone project. So here you will work in team uh, uh, for the company during three months, uh, meeting uh, managers from the company regularly and presenting your work at the end of the MBA. Then we have uh, some workshops with company. For instance, we have the L'Oréal Day. So we have a manager from L'Oréal coming and, and students work with the L'Oréal manager during one day and then same thing, they, they present their work at the end of the day. And we also recommend students to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to go to, to get the LVMH inside certificate. And we, uh, we, uh, 
uh, we accompany them on, on this. So that's for field work. Um, but our um, understanding luxury is also about getting uh, on the field and, and, and for this we have the two field trips. I have mentioned before that here field trips will be in China and in the US and two, uh, and two, um, and two uh, physical field trips in Italy and England. In addition, uh, we organize savoir-faire visits. Uh, these savoir-faire visits are very important because here you get the opportunity to understand what is specific about like these French brands, the heritage, the savoir-faire. So we go to Louis Vuitton, uh, we go to uh, Le Sage, uh, we, uh, it's an embroidery uh, workshop. We go in Champagne to visit uh, Krug Champagne. We go on the Place Vendôme to visit uh, L'Ecole Van Cleef and M. Arpels. We go to John Lobb, uh, which is a uh, shoes um, uh, brand um, by, by Hermes. So what is important here is to really understand the savoir-faire, what is specific about these French brands, but being on the field and interacting with the people who make these product and interacting with managers and CEOs. And last, uh, it's a, a, all the networking part. So you will uh, have a mentor during the program. This mentor can be an ESSEC alumni or can be also uh, an executive working in the uh, industry. And you'll spend uh the not the entire year with with that mentor but you will be able to meet that mentor from time to time and it will help you in 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 going through your career path in in, in defining your career path uh, we organize conferences with Global MBA alumni last year we had 25 uh, conferences uh, and these conferences are um, are designed just because 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 of your interest. So we never know who we're going to invite to invite every year because it's really based on what students are interested in. Uh, we also are invited to uh, corporate presentations and talk with uh, recruiters. So we go to L'Oréal Lux. So, for instance, we're going uh, next week to L'Oréal Lux where we meet the HR uh, and we meet uh, several managers. We also go to Kering, to LVMH, to Richmond. So, so our students are exposed to all these uh, uh, HR departments and recruiters. And, and then we organize, uh, uh, I think it's five networking cocktails with alumni in different uh, nice places around Paris. So I think that's it. Thank you. Um, Laha, Sophia, do you have any um, insight into what kind of um, events you benefited from and um, networking experiences that you had that comes to mind? Uh, definitely, I don't know, Sophia, you want to go first or shall I? Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, for sure, honestly, just to share with you a uh, part of my story. Uh, me, when I uh, joined the program, I uh, well, cosmetics wasn't really uh, on my top one radar. And it was through a conference uh, with L'Oréal that I meet this amazing HR person at L'Oréal and we just connect very spontaneously. She introduced me to a general manager at L'Oréal who became my official mentor after. And since then, it's been me discovering uh, the cosmetics industry and then I joined uh, L'Oréal. So really, uh, honestly, every step uh, of these points that Delphine and Laura mentions are really great opportunities for you to explore. And this is one of the reasons I imagine you come to an MBA, uh, to meet people, to discover opportunities. and. Uh, a SEC MBA gives you a fantastic platform throughout different events to do so. I think for me, um, what was really beneficial, um, as mentioned, are the guest speakers. So that really um, let us discover, as Lara said, all the different uh, product categories you can have in luxury. 
So although I was quite set on fashion and specifically ready to wear for women, um, it really helped me to have the exposure to everything and to really understand how luxury um, is managed in all those different categories. So haute differently from champagne, differently from ready to wear, um, but having that global vision of the whole industry, I think is, is really, really helpful. And it has stayed with me um, in my approach to luxury over the last 10 years of, of my career. Um, I think also the trips were extremely beneficial. So we went also to Italy uh, and a few other places and just to have a different vision. Um, so outside of Paris, but also the other main luxury um, uh, centers of the, of the world. Um, the savoir-faire visits as well, a bit, a, a bit going, going to what I said previously about having that uh, 360 vision on all product categories. So really understanding also the um, artisan and craftsmanship behind the products um, that was really helpful as well. And um, yeah, what I really enjoyed in terms of the courses were the fact that we had a mix of professors, but also industry professionals. And this was extremely helpful to have the base and the core courses um, that are, you know, uh, across all MBAs worldwide, but then also have additionally all those the industry professionals who can really give real life examples of how to apply these concepts uh, in in working in the industry. Thank you. Thank you for your insights to both of you. And, and definitely, so here we were on the Talent Center slide and, and all those events are also um, organized with the Talent Center, which is a career guidance um, office, which really helps you. And there's four phases, we'll say there's four steps, will prepare you to uh, make sure that you know yourself and that you know um, who is uh, available to you to help you with your career. Um, then we will help you launch. Uh, we'll use re different resources and different values that you've brought to us to build your plan of action to to start your 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 search for your for your career. Then we'll help you stre strengthen uh, your brand, strengthen your profile to really make sure that you become you know top talent, someone that all companies are seeking to hire. And then the phase four is to let you shine. Uh, it's making sure that you expand your network, that we help you strategize your job search, that you're put at the right place at the right moment. So that, that is also how the Talent Center will help you. We'll help you in different ways and, and mostly also with your soft skills. So in classes, you will learn your hard skills. Um, you will learn everything that you need um, in the classroom. And then we'll also help you with personalized career development advice. You'll have individual career coaching sessions. You have four for the year with someone in the industry that is of interest to you. So if you're interested in fashion, if you're interested in wine, spirits, we will have someone that will coach you that is related to um, this industry. We have personal branding workshop, making sure that your personal brand is on par. Uh, we'll have LinkedIn workshop, LinkedIn is very, very important these days. So it's important for you to be able to uh, put your best foot forward on this uh, social media. Um, we have one day workshop on challenging your path. So much like um, Lara said, she was not really thinking about uh, makeup beforehand. And then she challenged her, her view and met people and was able to embrace um, that new path that, that was uh, for her. Um, and then we also have webinars on uh, virtual interviewing, which is very important these days. Um, we all have to um, interview or do events online, so it's important that you are um, you're prepared for those. Uh, now I'm going to let uh, some other people talk besides uh, me or Delphine. Um, so Lara, I'm going to reintroduce you uh, first. You are an alumna from 2014, so you have been out of the program for seven years, right? Um, exactly. And you're the Zone Marketing Director for L'Oréal Lux. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Um, first one, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, so hello again, uh, everyone, and thank you, Laura and Delphine, for your uh, super presentations. 
Um, so first, uh, just in a nutshell, uh, I'm uh, I'm Lebanese. I grew up and I did uh, my uh, study and un undergraduate studies uh, in Beirut uh, in business administration, uh, BA with a concentration in finance. I have uh, 12 years, almost 12 years of prof professional experience behind me. So as I mentioned before, uh, five years before I come uh, to a SEC business school, uh, I was um, in investment banking and mergers and acquisitions. So I did that for five years based out of uh, Dubai. Uh, and then uh, currently I have uh, after the MBA, so seven years of uh, experience at L'Oréal. Uh, it's my third job. Uh, so I started with L'Oréal Travel Retail and uh, commercial role and then I moved to head a brand and travel retail and currently uh, uh, as you saw a zone marketing director and really uh, the MBA at ESSEC uh, was a key uh, in my transition from investment banking uh, to the luxury industry and more specifically beauty and was really a catalyst for me uh, to do this change uh, and uh, start a new uh, amazing career in the beauty industry. Great, thank you. And how about... Maybe, uh, sorry, sorry, Laura, Laura, before uh, moving to the, the next question, just wanted to say something important, uh, is that uh, in this MBA, we have students who already have an experience in luxury, but we also have students like, like Lara who want to switch career and to just to, to join that industry. Uh, it's very balanced and, and both profiles are very important. Uh, and also, it, it is also important to have both profile in school, because in the classroom, because then, you know, group discussion, teamwork, we have so many different expertise. So that is also very important to, uh, to enrich uh, discussion in class discussion or, or teamwork. And then I agree more. Absolutely. It's part of the diversity of profiles that we talked about. And, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm sure it brings a lot of um, discussions in the classroom also that you wouldn't have if you had similar profiles. So what um, is important is to be passionate about this. Even if it's a new passion, it's just important to, to have this strong desire to, to move into that industry. And if I may compliment uh, Delphine and Laura, you know, one, uh, one of the students in my class back then has a background in acting and theater acting career before she does her MBA. And honestly, working with her and discussing with her was one of the most enriching uh, thing uh, to me because, you know, uh, coming from acting, uh, uh, the, it's such a creative industry and different approach to uh, solving problems, uh, building brands, etc. That uh, to me, coming from a very strict investment banking background, it was one of the most enriching uh, experience um, in the program, working with her. So would, would, would maybe diversity or passion be one of the three words that you would use to, uh, to describe the program? Definitely. You know, uh, one of the first words that comes to mind talking about the program is uh, something a bit more as well uh, um, broader than diversity. I would say richness of the program because of the diversity of the people in terms of nationalities, but also in terms of backgrounds and skills and mindset, as we just discussed. Uh, but also the diversity of topic that this MBA uh, really tackles and the agility of the ESSEC Business School to adapt to topics that are relevant in today's business world. So uh, this is one of them. And as well, the methods of learning that you uh, both of you just described in your presentation, because you have classrooms, you have conferences, you have workshops, you have field trips, uh, field projects, etc. So this diversity as well uh, and very immersive method of learning was extremely, extremely rich, uh, rich uh, to me. And then the second word, I would say it's intense uh, with all the positiveness that comes with intensity uh, because it creates a lot of uh, passion and momentum. Um, so uh, again, as we uh, saw with the, in your presentation and from my own experience, uh, the courses, the projects, the conferences, the company visits, the networking, the people you meet, it's a very uh, strong, fast momentum uh, that creates a lot of synergy between the different uh, things that we do 
So um, that was as well extremely uh, beneficial uh, to me and it unlocks a lot of uh, doors and ideas. And finally, I would end with people. Uh, people, uh, by my peers uh, at the MBA back then, and some of them, uh, but all of them are in my network today, and some of them became very good friends of, uh, of mine. But also the professionals that, that we meet, and we meet as uh, we saw in today's presentation, professionals uh, from the various sec sectors of the uh, of the uh, industry, but also the professors who, as uh, very uh, rightly Sophia mentioned as well, are extremely balanced between pure academics, but also industry professionals, etc. That all of them uh, brought something really uh, different uh, to my path. And finally, all the program staff, um, whether the program director, whether uh, the person also that accompanied us uh, throughout our, uh, if you called it in your previous slide, talent, um, balance uh, development and career to find a job and career orientation. Uh, and I completely agree with what you said before that it's a very personalized path. So this is also your, you feel you're not just a number and you know, you feel that you are very well accompanied into your steps. So uh, really people are a key uh, part of my experience at the MBA. Great, thank you. And so I assume all of this is in the combination of what helped you um, achieve your, your different professional goals um, after, after the program, right? Definitely. So, you know, uh, for me doing an MBA, I had uh, three, uh, three uh, goals in mind. The first goal is uh, coming from investment banking. I really wanted to explore uh, the luxury industry. Um, so really, uh, with all what we cited before, it was a perfect year of transition, of exploring different things, uh, opening my mind uh, to different opportunities and possibilities. The second one is obviously like I think uh, everyone uh, is to get a super uh, amazing and cool job uh, after, which fits my career ambition and it was absolutely uh, the case. As I mentioned, uh, through, uh, Loreal, through an ESSEC organized conference with L'Oréal, like you, you're doing, you're going next week, uh, it unlocked uh, a path for me uh, that led uh, for me to landing a job. But not only that, the mentorship program, the field project that I did, because I didn't do it with L'Oréal, but I did it in travel retail, which even helped my case more to joining the L'Oréal uh, travel retail uh, team. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's been a great uh, catalyst and step-by-step -step building path throughout the program uh, until I uh, got my job uh, thanks to uh, the SEC MBA uh, um, uh, program that I did. And finally, you know, uh, having just an exciting and amazing experience. And this is one of the reasons you come as well to do an MBA, uh, to travel, to meet people, to explore, to develop on a personal level. And I would definitely say uh, with everything that we have experienced, I develop a lot as a person, uh, but also living uh, in Paris for the people who choose to uh, be based out of Paris, uh, which by the way, was not a very long uh, ride to a uh, campus, but living in Paris uh, was also just amazing. And uh, I came back uh, uh, to, to live and permanently now I've been five years in Paris uh, because it's an amazing city. Thank you. And, and do you have any advice for um, all of the um, potential applicants that are that are here watching us? Yeah, I think uh, from my side, uh, you know, uh, first I would uh, I have one advice on the application process uh, because I can imagine like we did, uh, you have the GMAT, etc. But there is some essays uh, part to that. I really uh, advise everyone uh, to really uh, be extremely genuine and tell their unique stories in those essays because I really do believe and now having uh, a lot of times discussed with the uh, ESSEC uh, team, uh, I really do believe ESSEC is a place that uh, really values uh, this diversity of people, background, the richness and the uniqueness of their stories. So I really advise everyone uh, to really put forward that in their essays and their application. Um, the second part is during the program, uh, to me, uh, again, it's about really opening uh, the chakras uh, once you are in the program. <laughs> When you're working in people, discovering opportunities, etc., because it's the year to do that, and you might uh, surprise yourselves. Uh, 
And finally, that is more uh, related to later, hopefully, in the job hunt, uh, be extremely uh, confident that at the end you will find the job that you want uh, out of the program. You just have to be patient and work on it uh, step by step with all of your uh, stakeholders uh, and um, be extremely proactive in your uh, networking. Uh, whenever you find a person that interests you, don't hesitate to talk to them, email them, ask your mentors, your professors to put you in touch with people from the industry because the more you talk to people, the more uh, you will uh, do your due diligence on the company you want to work for, the sector you want to work for, et cetera, and uh, people have, we can, might have great resources to you. And uh, this is it uh, for me. Thank you very much. Um, so, Sophia, oh, I did not put your picture up. I do apologize. <laughs> um, Sophia, uh, so I'm going to reintroduce you also. So you're an M Global MBA alumni from 2012, uh, and you're now a collection merchandising coordinator for Saint Laurent. Um, I'm going to ask you the, the same question. So first, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself, your background? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm originally from Canada. Um, I did my undergrad at McGill uh, in finance, marketing, and international business. Uh, and it's at that time that I decided that I wanted to merge my two passions, so for luxury and fashion, with the business side. And I started doing some research of what kind of jobs I could get. And um, that's when I realized how difficult it was to penetrate and get into this industry. Um, so I started to do some research of how how I could get there, and that's when I fell on the uh, ESSEC uh, MBA uh, with this luxury specialization. So I had contacted the, them at that time, and as I mentioned, they said I needed at least two years of experience. So I worked um, in the Canadian retail industry, so for mostly Hudson's Bay Company, uh, but on the finance and accounting side. So I feel that really gave me um, a good base. I'm quite um, agile with numbers and in my current my current job and my, my last 10 years of, of career in luxury, the analysis part is very important. So I had a great base um, from that and I was lucky enough to be accepted uh, into the MBA. Um, as soon as I applied, so after just two years of experience. So I was among the youngest of the class, but um, as, as you mentioned, the diversity um, is extremely important. So having people with little work experience, some with a lot, and coming from different industries is really what makes the program um, so, so rich. Um, so since, since the MBA, I've been, I was also lucky enough to find a job in Paris, and I've been here ever since. Um, so I was working first in um, Haute Couture on the relaunch of uh, Schiaparelli uh, brand, Place Vendôme. So that was almost four years and it was an amazing experience because it was really small, only seven people in the company when I joined. And now it's um, it's much bigger and they're opening stores at Bergdorf's and it's, it's developing. So that was an incredible um, experience to put put everything in place in terms of marketing and merchandising at that time. Um, I then uh, continued on to Louis Vuitton where I was really able to specialize in women's ready to wear, which is really what my goal was since the beginning. Um, and so I was product manager there on, on the marketing side as well for that category. Uh, and finally, almost three years ago, I joined uh, Saint Laurent. Um, and I'm now in charge of uh, collection merchandising for other women's ready to wear category as well. Great, thank you. And so now I'm going to ask you about those three words, and none of them can be the same as Laha. <laughs> I think um, for me, I have to say, I think passion and diversity, which were already mentioned, but for sure. Um, for sure, that's what's important and that what that's what you really get from the program. I think passion um, is something that it's amazing actually to be with other individuals who are just as passionate as you about this industry. And that's what makes it um, that's what makes it so, so rich and so, um, yeah, and, and so much fun and and you're able to exchange with everyone on the same, everyone's kind of on the same level 
and that's something that you really find in even in your career after um, is that people in this industry really work um, because because of this passion because it can be a bit of a crazy world and a crazy environment sometimes and so if you don't have this passion it doesn't it doesn't work so it was really amazing to be with um, all of the other students just as passionate as you about uh, about something um, and I would say yeah instead of intensity I had thought more of hard work but it does kind of it is kind of the same thing so it's really um, a whirlwind of a year you don't really have time for anything else and I think you need to really give it all you have and let this year be all-encompassing and um, yeah work as much as you can as hard as you can and meet as many people and network um, as you can and um, and diversity which was already mentioned as well but in terms of international background of languages and also of experience as I mentioned um, and even the fact to be in a classroom where some people want to work in watches and jewelry and some people wine and spirits and some in fashion but all kind of part of the same world makes it um, makes it a lot more interesting and um, and more rich thank you and in how you know is there any specifics or ways that ISEC contributed to uh, achieving your goals for sure um as i mentioned i had decided i wanted a career in in this specific industry i was extremely passionate and ISEC is definitely what helped me to achieve this goal, I think um, some some colleagues of mine, maybe they were intern started out in the industry as interns at 22 years old, but that's not possible for everyone. And so, if you're trying to um, get into the industry at a bit of a higher level um, and with already some experience behind you, ISEC definitely was is what allowed me to make that that transition. So to get the understanding of the industry, the visibility of how it works. And the network is really what um, allowed me to get that first that first job. And um, what I would say is, once you kind of get your foot in the door and you can prove yourself, then you your career is kind of launched from there. So you really just need that first um, that first opportunity. Absolutely. And is there any advice that you would yeah, that you would give to people watching us right now? Um. A bit, as I said about about the hard work, I think um, the program is really unique, and um, it's really the time to to put in the work um, and try to achieve achieve your goals. So if um, yeah, if you if you don't have that passion, it's maybe not for you. But if you have it, this is the time to to go for it, to do your best, and and to um, and to really take in everything that's offered to you during this year. Um, during the MBA, as you were mentioning before, between the field trips, all the different courses, all the events, the speakers, there's so many things offered to the students and you really have to take advantage and, and participate in, in everything. Thank you. Um, Delphine, is there an advice that you would like to give uh, <laughs> um, future, future applicants, future candidates? Okay. Um, Putting you on the have... spot here. <laughs> yeah okay so so for for application maybe uh because we have started interviewing um candidates and i think what is very important uh during the interview is just show who you are show your passion as uh, lara and sofia mentioned this is important make us dream make us think that yes uh, we, we, we will really believe in, in you and we will help you then to, uh, to build your, your path and build your journey into the, the world of luxury. But just be yourself. Do not try to, uh, you know, have like fake discourses and, and no, just be yourself and explain why you want to, uh, to be part of the group and also what you can bring also to the group. This is very important because it's not about just one, uh, one student, but it's also about a group and you're, you're, you're going to, to spend one year with a group of, um, of students coming from all over the world. So it's important that we understand how you can fit into, uh, how you can fit into that group. 
Uh, so that, that's my uh, advice. For <laughs> Um, so here we have two great examples of, of our alumni telling you about their stories, but um, we have very diverse alumni class. Um, you know, they work for Chanel, Le Boutin, L'Oréal, LVMH, Estée Lauder, Prada, many, many different luxury brands in many different positions. Um, so if, if I give you another example, um, one of our alumni from South Korea uh, was a brand manager for LG in South Korea and now is in retail strategy development at Chanel. So um, we really help you go towards the company of your dreams, the uh, job of your dreams. So on this slide, you'll see the different sectors of activity and the different positions that our graduates uh, hold after um, the program. Now I'm going to go into more of the specifics about the application. Like Delphine said, we've already started um, our interviews for um, admissions into the program. So let's say we have about four, you know, four stages um, of the application. So the first stage is extremely important. It's preparation. It's making sure that you um, get as much information about the program as you can. So it's visiting our website, attending the webinar. So you thank you for being here. You're doing the first first stage, the preparation. Um, you will choose your major, you'll prepare your essays. And like Lara said, it's very important to be very genuine, very honest and um, and candid about what your, your professional goals are. And then also talk to an advisor or an ambassador. So an advisor would be me. Reach out to me at any time. Um, you have the email at the bottom of the page. Um, I will send you an email after the presentation. Reach out to me, exchange with me through email, through the phone. I'll be happy to give you as much information um, as you need. Second stage would be the online I can application. Add something. Can I add something on this? I think it's Absolutely. also important. Uh, important to follow us on LinkedIn so you can you can see what's happening. We have uh, a LinkedIn page where uh, students relate well, what they do, like uh, savoir-faire visits, the networking events, uh, or specific courses that they enjoyed very much. So yeah, so this is another way to 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 better understand uh, the program and to get some insights on on the program. So you'll find the uh, uh, the link on, on, on the chat. Thank you. Absolutely. And so like, I, like we said earlier, social media is extremely important. So follow us also on social media. We can, we can get to know you also um, that way. Um, online application um, will be um, on our website directly. I will send you the link when we exchange. Um, then once you submit your application, you will then um, go on to an interview. Um, so the interview is with um, either dead or a program director or um, an alumni or an HR professional, someone who will exchange with you about your professional um, goals, your professional project. And then um, if you're admitted, you'll be notified quite, quite quickly and will accompany you through the process of enrolling. So our next deadline is December 19. So you have a bit of time to, um, to, to, to prepare for this. Feel free to reach out to me anytime um, and I'll let you know more about the, about the process. Um, now I think there might be some questions, so I'll be happy to um, answer um, answer them. So go right ahead and ask all your questions in the chat and I'll be happy to um, to answer them or to ask someone on the panel to answer. Um, so Lara and Sophie, um, what do you consider was the most enriching experience in the program and what was the key, one key point that helped you develop your career? Um, I think I, I mentioned it um, quite extensively when we, we were talking earlier, but it's um, it's really for me all the diversity and richness of things that are proposed during the MBA. So not only the courses from professors, industry professionals, but also all the networking opportunities, uh, the guest speakers and the trips. So you really have a, such an array of different ways of learning and of getting to know the industry that for, for me, that's what makes it really special and, uh, and different from other programs. Um, and in terms of what really one thing that really helped me, um, 
in terms of launching my career actually was the, the great um, partnership we had with the career counselor. So my first interview was through um, my career counselor who had um, the CEO actually of Stepparedi reach out to her and say she was looking for someone in marketing. Um, the career counselor knows very well every student, what they're looking to do. So right away um, proposed my profile and a couple of others. And then that's what allowed me to, to get to land that first job. So that was uh, totally instrumental in, um, in that. Yeah, to me, I uh, completely agree with Sophie. I don't think there is one thing in particular that is the only and most important thing. It's really uh, the addition and the complementarity of all the different opportunities and platforms and experiences uh, that we have of the program. If I uh, would like to mention one thing that could answer as well both of the questions, to me, it would be as well the field project. Uh, because uh, the experience to me was extremely rich because I did it based out of Hong Kong. It was one of the largest uh, luxury travel retailers uh, at the time called the DFS, which is owned by LVMH Group. Uh, so they flew us uh, to Hong Kong and we were like real consultant uh, for uh, two months and a half. We have done an amazing uh, experience uh, being there uh, with all the uh, company executive uh, being based out of Hong Kong, which is a real hub uh, to luxury retail. Um, uh, and uh, also this field project, as I mentioned, uh, because I wanted uh, to enter into a L'Oréal travel retail. But after having done a uh, field project and uh, travel retail was absolutely a plus uh, to boost uh, my application to L'Oréal and uh, launch my career uh, in travel retail. Thank you to the both of you. So I understand that um, you might have to leave because uh, you're a very busy woman um, with a great career thanks to this like, global MBA. <laughs> so feel free to uh, to leave if you need to at two. Uh, for all the people watching, um, I, I will be say, staying uh, to answer any questions. Delphine, I believe you might be able to stay uh, for a few minutes also. So you can continue um, asking your questions, but Laha and, and Sophia might, might be leaving a little a little earlier so uh, so i'll let you thank you both first and then i can continue taking some questions well, thank you uh, to all of you it's been a really great pleasure uh, to be here and share uh, our love for a sec uh, and good luck for everyone uh, on the chat and i hope you'll have amazing experiences as we did bye bye thank you so much thank you thank very you. much that was great to have you here thank you Bye. I will join uh, Laura in um, in thanking you all and wishing you luck for for your applications and for the year uh, to come, which is going to be an uh, amazing year in your life and uh, in in your career. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, now someone is asking roughly what percentage of each cohort does not have EU passports and what does the school do to support them in obtaining work permits in France post-graduation? Thank you. Um, I think I might be able to answer the first part of the question. Second part, Delphine, you might be um, able to help a little more, maybe. <laughs> um, so. The percent, I do not have the percentage uh, specifically, but as we have a great diversity, I would say we have about you know 60% of our students who have uh, a non-EU passport. Uh, we will support our students in helping them obtain their visa, their student visa, with a registration letter, with Compris um, France help, any type of help that we can provide. Um, and then Delphine, as you are not so sure, for the after, um, our global MBA has the Grade de Master, which allows students to stay one extra year uh, to find a job in France um, afterwards, after their graduation. It's something that's done automatically. So whenever you have your titre de séjour, your visa for France, um, you are able to go to the préfecture, to the French administration, show your um, titre de séjour, and you will be uh, granted the one extra year um, for the work permit. And we obviously will help you find the job also. Um, 
Yeah, I, I'm not the best person to answer that question, but as Laura mentioned, we have uh, many students uh, coming from all over the world. So this is the type of situation that we uh, we are used to to manage. So uh, I, I can I know that we know how to do it, and then, <laughs> but I'm not the right person. I'm sorry to do that to not having this information. But this is more the talent center people will be able to. Uh, to answer that question. Absolutely, so the talent center that is here for you with, will also help you with that. And this is for the first year. After your first year, you're in your company and the company will help you with your work permit. So in any case, you'll have the help at the beginning and then the help from the company. Mm. Um, are the cost of the trips included in the yearly MBA fees or is it additional? No, it is included. Fantastic. So for both both trips to London and to uh, and to Italy, and even the savoir-faire visit, the savoir-faire visit, for instance, going to Champagne, it's uh, one uh, one or even two hours uh, from Paris. Uh, it's included. There. Everything is included. Not meals uh, when we go on, on trips, but. Uh, Otherwise, and, and networking events when we have uh, cocktails, uh, it's also included. Great. Um, is there a good chance to get placed at a company in Europe if not from Europe? Um, giving JSUC's example, he is from Korea and now found a job in Korea after an MBA in France. Um, Delphine, do you want to go ahead? Yes, so we have, uh, I mean, each each pass is each career is very unique and and very specific so we have students coming from uh, different countries who want to go back to their home countries uh, but we also have students who want to move in europe and stay in france so yes we have a uh, different type of situation if you take the example of sophia sophia was coming from canada now she works in paris same thing for for, for Laura, lara she she, she came from Lebanon and now she works in Paris. So yes, both we have uh, we have any situations. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Shirley from Colombia is asking, what are the major challenges challenges in the application process and the interview part? Um, I don't think we want to make it a challenge. <laughs> no, that that's not that's not our philosophy. I mean, we're here to help you grow, not not to you know, to terrify you or anything. We just want to know you better. Uh, to understand your passion, to understand your goal, how you see yourself after. Um, it, it's not it's not a challenge. It's uh, it's about yourself. <laughs> I don't know, Laura, what you wants to to add to this. Yeah, I think that the, when I talk with uh, prospective applicants, I ask them to be as, like Laha said, as genuine and um, you know honest about their aspirations, and and don't hesitate to be very passionate. Um, don't have to stay general about I have a general idea of what I want to do. Be specific into what you want, so we can make sure that we can help you, uh, and that we're the right program for you. If you're specific, if you have great ideas, we um, we want to make sure we can help you. Um, if we could highlight the type of job profiles after the course, and if any of those profiles are research oriented in the field of luxury, because um, one of the people watching us is hesitating be between a doctorate and an MBA. Oh, uh, a DBA is very different from an MBA. So this is an MBA. Our goal is not to uh, uh, to train research profiles, so it's an MBA. It's not a DBA. Yeah. And someone's asking if they can apply as a fresher, so right after high school, I assume. Um, that that would not be possible. Or if it's after, um, even just after your master's, it's not possible either. We require uh, three years of professional experience. So 
uh, Sophia had two at the time. Uh, now we do we we do require uh, three years minimum to get into the program. No, yeah. but but if you're really interested, uh, it's important to 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 construct your project so, so to build your project to think of it uh, in a long term as a long term project so try to to get this three years experience and relate it to 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 what you're interested in it can be like uh if it's fashion if it's got the cosmetics uh, if it's uh, wine and spirit i have no idea what you're interested in and, and try to to build something related to to what you're you're interested in and then uh of course the the, the chance of um, of getting accepted uh, will increase a lot absolutely um someone's asking that they have no prior experience specific to luxury but they want to pick up courses for a change of track is there any requirement for prior experiences no it's uh as i mentioned before and and as uh, lara also explained um we have students with no background on luxury this is not required we have students who are here to discover luxury to join the luxury industry and 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 this is also great uh, because they have a background, they have an, they're, they, they're coming from different industries and this is also very important because it's a source of enrichment, so um, it's not required, okay? So you can come with whatever background in terms of education or in terms of industry or in terms of position. We are very open. I would add to that that the diversity of background um, is what we seek, but also make sure that you show that you're passionate. If you have a background in finance and just tell us that, oh, I'm interested in luxury, um, we might not be as convinced. So make sure you fully show and explain um, your passion about luxury and what's interesting um, to you. Okay, so then we have a question on the future of luxury. Well, you know, luxury is just uh, uh, <laughs> related to who we are and to our human kindness. Luxury, uh, you know, it's coming from the, uh, I still exist, even the, the, uh, the um, people from the uh, antique times uh, consumed luxury goods. So uh, luxury consumption is something that does exist, is, it will still exist. And what is important, of course, is that luxury is going to change. The luxury industry is changing a lot. And this is what is also very exciting about luxury. Uh, so for sure, the, the luxury in the future will be more technology oriented, will be more sustainable. We'll also have to face many other challenges, but like luxury uh, consumption will still be very, very important. The number of consumers around the world is growing. Uh, the, the last Bain uh, study shows that uh, in five years, we should have about 400, uh, 400 million customers all around the world. So uh, yes, I really believe that luxury is <laughs> will grow and grow and grow. But of course, it's going to change. And that will be your job to, uh, to keep up with these changes and to make also luxury change. So yes, plenty of uh, amazing opportunities and challenges to, uh, uh, to tackle. Um, now, let's, do students only get placed in Paris, for, I assume, for the consulting capstone or other cities as well? Okay, so, so the uh, luxury track is uh, in, uh, in Paris, uh, not, uh, not on other campuses. And concerning the, the capstone, uh, it really depends. I mean, each year capstones are different, but most of the time uh, students are, uh, are, I mean, uh, capstones are based in Paris. Uh, so the, 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 what Lara explained is maybe a bit uh, unique but you see it's like we never know because each year is different 
Um, now we're asking if the January 23rd deadline is the last deadline to apply. It is not. It's just our next two ones that I showed on the slides. It's always better to apply um, as soon as you feel prepared, as soon as you have all the information. Um, we want to make sure that you are able, if you're outside of Europe, to do all your visa demands, all of those things before uh, you join the program. So if you have to quit a current job, if you have to um, move, it's better that you apply soon, have your answer um, on time and are able to do the rest of it. Yeah, I think it's very important and it's very important for you also because, I mean, it's 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 going to be a new life. So you have to be prepared to to think about it, to just to project you into that this new life. So so the, the better you start, the, the, the better it is. Yeah. So, yeah, I really advise that you you you, uh, you apply as soon as you're ready. Do not do not wait too late. And so now we have a question about the cost of the program and the scholarships. So the program is 49,500 euros for the year with a possibility for an, first an early bird scholarship. So if you apply before December 19, um, you are able to have an early bird scholarship automatically applied to your application. And then we have six other um, scholarships that you can benefit from. They are on our website. Uh, they're very well explained. Um, and most of our students will benefit from um, scholarships going from women in MBA, going to entrepreneurship, um, high potential emerging markets. There are different scholarships for different profiles. All right, so there are lots of questions. <laughs> uh, there are lots of questions still. I'm sure lots of people still uh, attending. Uh, we're sorry if we did not answer your questions. We do have to uh, stop this webinar and let you go on with your afternoon or your morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, I will put our email back on the screen. Um, please feel free to uh, reach out to me uh, specifically or to us um, if you have any questions. Um, we'll be very happy to connect. I'll be happy to chat. Um, Delphine, is there one last word uh, that you'd like to share before we, we stop this webinar? So I was very happy to um, to be here today to, to speak about, to present you the, uh, the Global MBA. Uh, and, and I'm very happy that the most important word of today is, is passion. And uh, so if you're passionate about luxury, uh, this is a place to be, uh, and we hope we will uh, be able to uh, help you in in developing that passion and also uh, help and and also give you the opportunity to uh, make your dream coming true. So um, I hope to get the opportunity to uh, meet you soon uh, in uh, uh, an interview uh, to know more about you, who you are what you're interested in and, and, and what you would like to do. So see you soon. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. See you soon. I'm looking forward to speaking with all of you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Delphine. Awesome. Bye. <laughs>